Another lens at the media landscape is mobile. What is happening in mobile? A lot of things. Um, and how do they affect storytelling and the media landscape as a whole? Rudy de Waale, an entrepreneur who started many companies in the field of mobile and has also been studying the mobile world for years, is going to give us an introduction and his claim, of course, is everything is mobile. Interesting, uh, interesting thing that he also does is that he works in a startup in Africa, so he also knows different markets and sees what mobile is doing there. Rudy. Uh, good afternoon. I have been invited here to uh, uh, give you an overview on mobile. So uh, first, I'm not an expert in storytelling, so, but I hope I will uh, give you some ideas of uh, what is happening in mobile and inspire you a bit of what you could do uh, with this new medium. So uh, it's, my title was, it's all about mobile, but in the end, I think it's all about apps. Uh, apps are basically augmenting everything we do and are basically the interaction from, from uh, virtual to physical. So uh, my history has been uh, uh, in digital and internet for over 20 years and 14 years in mobile. I've worked with major brands and telcos, handset manufacturers, fa fast-moving consumer brands, and organized also lots of events in mobile, for which I have been in touch with lots of CEOs of these uh, uh, disruptors, or so-called disruptors. So uh, one of the, uh, I put all my slides on SlideShare, also this one will go on SlideShare, so uh, just look for me on, on Google and you will find all the slides. One of the most popular is Mobile Trends 2020, which is actually a document with 50 visionaries in mobile that uh, share their experiences for this decade. And uh, we published this in 2010. The interesting thing is that some of them are already happening. Yeah, so that's how fast it goes in mobile. So I uh, recently moved to London last year and I found a company there, Nyota Media, which is actually helping African entrepreneurs uh, with uh, growth in their business and also international companies that want to uh, help improve the life of Africans through mobile technology. So there's a lot of going on in that area. So I'll give you a short uh, introduction of what's happening actually with mobile technology, what are the major disruptions or uh, augment, augmentations uh, happening in mobile, some mobile consumer trends, and then some real cases of how apps are transforming businesses and sectors, and then some storytelling with mobile. So first, uh, we are now in, a, uh, I think, a very exciting time uh, of change. There's lots of changes happening everywhere, thanks to mobile technology. This device was not here five years ago, and now it's basically disrupting and changing sectors. Yeah, the people who don't understand mobile or who can't create a great experience on mobile are basically missing out on new opportunities. Big uh, companies, large corporations are now actually understanding this and are positioning in mobile because they understand that every interaction will be mainly coming from mobile device to other media and to other physical activities. So uh, just look at the Fortune 500. Uh, in 1999, almost 50% of the companies are not there anymore. This is all happening to the change of technology companies and the change in business. Uh, I agree with Paul that actually mobile or technology doesn't always disrupt, but the people who are not able to adapt are basically falling out. And there's a lot of new companies coming in that takes part of their business. So um, here's Mark Andreessen, the founder of Netscape. Uh, he's one of the investors in Facebook and other companies. Uh, what he has to say. Yeah, I think it's where we're on the, we're on the tipping point. The, the convergence of smartphones now is a very, very, very good time for experimentation uh, and for innovation. Mm -hmm. So you heard it right. The next three years, we will see more transformational changes than the last 10 years. There's a pretty bold statement. But he's not alone. Larry Page, the CEO of Google, uh, he announced uh, two weeks ago at Google I.O. that basically... Um, Google as a company and people that work in technology as an industry are at 1% of what's possible. Uh, Ray Kurzweil, who has been hired by Google recently as director of engineering, he's the inventor of the Singularity, a book that I can recommend to everybody. 
this is basically where the next leap of innovation is happening and going to accelerate a lot of changes too. Uh, the Singularity idea combines uh, basically nanotechnology, neuroscience, health, IT, uh, augmented uh, reality, artificial intelligence and robotics and they can't disconnect it from each other. They, they, they say it's all linked and all technologies are linked through the internet and that's what's creating this exponential growth. So he is saying that exponential growth of technologies will transform industries and pose new opportunities and hurdles, yeah, both for business and society. Uh, what's happening in mobile? Android, 900 million devices activated. 900 million. That's for a company or that's for a something, a product that wasn't there five years ago. They launched in October 2008. I think it's pretty, pretty revolutionary what's happening. Apple, 50 billion app downloads. Again, there, this was not there five years ago. Look at the curve. It's not linear, it's exponential. China becomes the world's largest smartphone market. Africa is now the world's second uh, phone market. Yeah, so we are not talking about the Western world and smartphones anymore. We are truly going to a global connected world where all these people will be able to share and exchange things. I'll give you some examples later on. Uh, at the same time, we also have uh, a, a generation of young entrepreneurs, I call them the wow generation, that are uh, actually willing to change the world. Yeah? With their ideas, they're all connected with each other. They're not really interested in making money. Yeah? So their first objective is actually to change the world, and they do that by improving services, by improving products all the time in every corner of the world. And the speed of innovation has never, has never been seen before. Every week there's new startups, there's new great ideas coming up. Global crowdfunding uh, reached uh, already 2.7 billion in 2012. Crowdfunding was not known three years ago or two years ago. It's a great financial mechanism to basically create your future or create your own future. Anybody with a great idea or even a program, you could basically launch it on Kickstarter and get it funded. Yeah, if you can get it funded from people behind you or in your own company. So there's lots of changes happening. Uh, publishing companies like Condé Nast are investing in fashion. Yeah, in fashion e-commerce and m-commerce sites. Why? Because their, their publishing activities on paper, their revenues are going down, and the new revenues, the new smart money is actually in fashion and e-commerce apps. Um, and there's lots of examples like that. Yeah, Google is breaking a driverless car. Amazon is going into publishing. Banks are basically creating real estate apps to create more value to their, for their users. I'll show some examples later. So I'm not going to bore you with statistics, but some of the key uh, things that you have to know is that mobile is going to bypass the desktop internet next year. Yeah, so this is happening already. Tablets is now the fastest sold de device ever. Yeah, in less than three years, it bypassed the desktop TV and also the notebook PC. As mobile increases, all other media decrease. Yeah, so this is uh, something that is happening everywhere. Yeah, so in TV, uh, actually people who understand mobile, who use mobile very well, Statistics are already there that they can augment their audience. Yeah? It's not only decreasing, but in, this is on a general level. Online, radio, print, and other services are all decreasing. Mobile is rising. So we re really move from mobile to apps. Yeah, so apps have now, uh, they were not there four years ago. Yeah, they were not there on the first four version of the iPhone or Android. They only came in the second year but they are now basically uh, transforming everything. Yeah? So your interface on your desktop, your interface on your TV becomes an app-alike experience. So apps are dominating everything. And they're not only on uh, computers anymore, they also come into your car, they will be on your fridge, they will be in health services and things like that. So some mobile cons uh, consumer trends. Second screen, which of you, uh, all, all of you heard about, is probably one of the biggest opportunities of doing things with mobile and TV. So the multi-screen user, the, the habits of the user are changing. Yeah, the ways that people consume content are changing. Yeah, so also for you, these are things to look at now and look at different scenarios of 
uh, how, how uh, your audience is actually using your program. 40% of consumers use social media while watching TV. This is a statistic that comes from eMarketer, Microsoft Advertising, Ericsson Consumer Lab, and Comscore. Uh, Ericsson uh, has a latest uh, number that goes already, it talks about 68%. So it's growing all the time, actually, this, this number. Uh, simultaneous smartphone use and tablet uses while watching TV. People are actually, uh, this is a slide, what they do, it explains what they do. Shopping, social networking sites, look up program information, product information, and also coupons. Uh, Grace Note, one of the pioneers in that area, Grace Note is actually the, the, the guys who had the database, database in your iTunes. So they are now basically go into TV recognition platform. How many of you have heard about Grace Note? Oh, wow. Okay. So watch this video. Sound, please. Start the application here listening, and it's going to then use audio fingerprinting to identify the content that's happening on the TV. So let's get this started. So it's now recognized what actors are on the screen and which music's playing, Bananarama, Cruel Summer. And it's even showing us down here which products are in the scene, from the cars to the motorcycles to some of the different things that are uh, on screen right now in this specific scene. So this is one of the new ways that the audience will consume your content. They will be able to get information on the actors, get information on the music, and even get information on products. Shazam, which you all know, is the Shazam music app that actually uh, recognizes music when you just hold it to a, a loudspeaker, is now doing the same for TV. They all already on 160 channels in US, yeah, which includes all the programs and includes all the advertising for those. Here's a short note too. So. And immediately browse the most tagged TV shows in the last few hours. Whether you tag a TV show yourself or tap on a popular show, you'll get celebrity buzz, tweets, music in the show, and more. And check out more photos of the cast. Okay. They go even further. They are developing an application that actually Shazam for clothes that will identify the clothes that the stars in the programs in the shows are watching. Or wearing, sorry. So uh, then for users, they basically will be one click away to buy those clothes. Yeah, so this will uh, create new opportunities also for brands and sponsors in your programs. The way that advertising works will change yeah, through mobile and through pads. This is the uh, slide from Advertising Age, which is basically the social TV ecosystem. Yeah, so this was not existing a couple of years ago. Look how big the pie is already and how many new companies are in there. Uh, some other trends, mobile snacking. Uh, there's a statistic in, uh, from a report in US that 63% of female users and 73% of ma ma male users are watching their mobile every hour. Yeah? So people are continuously checking their mobile, checking a notification, checking an email, checking a Facebook or Twitter message, or a YouTube video. Some of the companies that are jumping onto that or Vine that Monique already explained is the six, six second video that you can post on Twitter, which is now hugely popular. It's the, the highest rated app in the free apps and it's, uh, it's used already by film festivals to create really six second content, yes. Uh, I know it sounds a bit weird, but I think what is changing is basically the way consume people. Yeah? So the way consume media is very different than they used to do. And this is all with this new media, the, the mobile. So artists or people use it also on concerts or for situations. The easy thing is that it's just a touch on your touch screen and you can have a video already. And then you have easy editing things that you can do with the video. So and upload it straight to Twitter. This is Pink, and here is uh, Vivo UK, who actually uses this to engage with their audience. Okay. 
So I think what is happening is that, you know, the, the, especially the young generation is connecting differently with media. You know, they, they, they create media, they send it, they share it with their peers. And that is different to everything that we have been seeing before. Personal cloud will be very important too. So every, everything is uploaded to the cloud. Your apps, your preferences, uh, everything you do. Uh, so devices will become less important, but services and cloud services will become more important in the future. Geofencing is actually a, a physical area that can be tagged into a, a, a virtual space, so which can be used in programming also. So you can actually tag within certain locations and send notifications or interact with people within an app. This is now also used a lot in marketing already in, uh, in London, in big cities, Starbucks, L'Oreal, O2, they use it in London already. Internet of Things, of course, one of the big trends. 15 billion objects were already connected to the internet two years ago in 2011, and this trend keeps going. So uh, this will be also... Uh, image recognition, uh, NFC type of things, and censoring. Lots of uh, more and more sensors will come to mobile devices to interact with objects. Big data goes social. So all this data that is generated by mobile devices, by your iPads, your, your location, the things you do, the things you share, your pictures you create, your videos you're watching, all this data is actually guarded somewhere. So actually there has never been a time that people or brands and companies have been able to understand better the user uh, because they have all that information and they can do better things with that. So actually data scientists, they call them, those will be the new hotspots on the job market. These guys will actually be worth a lot of money because they will be able to analyze all that data and make something significant for you guys out of it. Predictive personalization is a trend that comes out of that. By knowing all this information, uh, companies are already experimenting with wrist, uh, wristbands and to uh, provide better experiences at, at events and stuff like that. Uh, Walt Disney is doing it in, uh, in their uh, amusement park in Florida and to, to provide a better experience for their users. Intelligent objects. Uh, Lego is already there with Mindstorm that actually they have IT or they have chips into the Lego So actually the kids can already start playing with that uh, Google Glass of course there's lockers now that you can open with your iPhone on a distance or lock it uh, Thermostats there will be more and more objects like, like that and also the speculative iWatch that is about to come to the market uh, how apps transform any business? I'll give you some concrete examples. In the games world, uh, anybody knows this game? Great, great, okay. So Clash of the Clans is a company that didn't exist uh, three years ago. It's a Finnish company and they created these games where actually people can uh, shortcut certain things uh, through the game by putting money. Yeah? So if you don't really know how to play, you can put money and then you can actually uh, get through the game. So this has been uh, now a really, really popular feature. So these guys grossed 179 million in the first quarter of 2013. Yeah? So that's a daily revenue of 2.4 million. Yeah? So they get 8.5 million daily players who play an average of 10 games uh, a day. Another one is the Gung Ho, is a Korean, uh, uh, a Japanese company, generated 2.5 million revenue a day, yeah, and have downloads of 13 million in 15 months. This company is 18 months old, yeah. So five months ago, Gung Ho stock was worth 280 million, and now it's worth 4.5 billion, which is more than Zynga, the Facebook uh, game uh, provider. Uh, Angry Birds, of course, they had already 1 billion downloads in May last year. Twitter hit the 200 million mark in December, but Angry Birds passed 263 million mark of active monthly users. So these companies get bigger than Twitter, yeah? which are one of the top social media companies. In health, uh, Fitbit, uh, which you may know, is actually that tracks your sleep, tracks your, uh, your weight loss, uh, you can eat smarter, it tracks your food consumption, your calories. Um, your sports uh, activities and of course also your sleep. So these apps have now more information than any doctor 
will have. Yeah? So you can go to the doctor with this app and you will be able to track more. So this is a really big trend. Uh, it's also called self-monitoring, where actually people take more, uh, 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 take the future in their own hands, right? Or, or get more uh, active with their own health. Nike Plus. How, how many of you have a Nike Plus or use it? Oh, wow. This is activity called Nike Fuel ties all these products connected ecosystem. Like calories, Nike Fuel is a way to gauge your daily activity. But unlike calories, which people burn at different rates depending upon body type, Nike Fuel is the only standard that lets you compare yourself with anyone else, no matter who they are or what they're doing. Walk, run, dance, skateboard, play basketball, it all counts. Nike Fuel Band is the device you wear that tracks everything you do. One button lets you check your fuel, calories, steps, and time. The LED lights change from red to yellow, and when you hit your goal, green. We've built it to be a motivational game. Getting to your goal every day is a core part of the experience. When you consistently hit your goal, Fuelly helps you celebrate. The social part is actually what keeps it really sticky. It's kind of that competition that keeps you coming back. Anyone who you're friends with on Facebook will be in your leaderboard. When you buy a fuel band, you automatically become part of the Nike Plus community, which includes Nike Plus running, training, and basketball. Now the Nike Plus platform is set to grow exponentially with more members who are active every day. When it came time to launch the product, we came up with one word that summarized it all. Counts. Can you count, suckers? Everything you do counts. That became the basis for the campaign introducing Nike Fuel to the world. Consumer. Yeah, so the great thing about this app is actually it lets you run better, it lets you run longer, and also it makes it more fun. Yeah, you can interact with your friends who run on the other side of the world, you can challenge them, things like that. So from a shoemaker, they go into a health type of application. Yeah, so these are the changes that are happening. And they go even further. So uh, Nike Plus created a developer platform uh, to connect with developers who build apps. Yeah, so they have part of that data they will uh, give for free to the apps, which they call Open API. Yeah, so developers can use that data, which is anonymously, but they can use it to also create other type of apps or integrate it in their apps. They have also created a Nike uh, Plus Accelerator, so they can mentor actually new ideas of people who create new apps within, within the sports industry. And they also they can learn from that. So they're one of the few companies who really understand mobile. It's really interesting to follow them, what they do. In education, I'm going to zoom into Africa now because there's actually quite some interesting things happening there. World Reader is a non-profit company based in San Francisco and uh, Barcelona, and their mission is to distribute digital books or books through uh, digital devices in Africa, yeah, in emerging countries. So they have distributed already 5,000 Kindles in Africa, in Ghana, Nigeria, uh, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania, and they work directly with ministries of education and schools. So they provide a whole school with Kindles, and then it's very interesting to see what these uh, children do with, with, with these uh, devices. Yeah? For example, they read less books that they have to read from school that they are obliged to read, but they read a lot more in actually what they want to read yeah? in their interest field. Uh, they also created a mobile app and they had 500,000 readers on mobile of stories uh, in Africa. And they are now experimenting with new models to actually uh, empower people who are writing stories or who want to write stories. So, uh, students that start writing stories, they will publish them already, so they, they have a whole distribution system immediately on the Kindle and the mobile. So this is quite unique. We don't even have that in the Western world. So these are models now that are copied by Microsoft, and Microsoft starts distributing tablets there and other companies too. Uh, I have a short... We live in a world that changes rapidly every day. Yet in Africa, most children who attend school never own a single book of their own. 
more than half of sixth graders in sub-Saharan Africa have no books in their classroom. World Reader is doing something that's never been done before. We're bringing books to all in the developing world using e-readers. Technology, which is quickly dropping in price, has long battery life, and uses cell phone technology available even in the most remote parts of the world. We're able to deliver books with no printing cost and no shipping cost. E-readers hold thousands of books, allowing people to choose the book they want to read. I'm going to stop it here. So uh, you have to understand also that uh, they use actually all the TV uh, wideband technology now to actually connect villages to villages. Yeah? Microsoft is on a project with that where they actually connect these villages through uh, old TV antennas actually yeah? and make that a, di a digital distribution center. Uh, Yoza is another app in South Africa where they actually create uh, like TV series but for novels. Yeah, so they, cre they release a story every day, and that's consumed by a lot of South Africans. And uh, it's popular because it's accessible on every device, also uh, low-tech phones. Automotive, maybe not in your first interest, but Mercedes-Benz is creating financial apps to create better value in the car. Yeah? Uh, this one, Silver Car, is actually they provide a unique experience on the phone where you can do car rentals at airports. Yeah, I'll, I'll not show this video here. But, but uh, these are the things that are happening. Actually, some services will become available only on mobile. Yeah, and by creating a, a great experience on mobile and a great experience for a car rental, they, I think they, they use all the uh, A4 cars. Uh, they had already deals now with Virgin, with Fjord, uh, to link with them and link those uh, car services with the flight service. Uh, Google is creating a driverless car. I don't know if you heard about it, but they are basically Google, a search giant, is now going into the car industry. So they go in totally different directions. In tourism, this is a project from RTTV where they connect basically old uh, cinema elements that are able to be viewed in Paris at the location itself. Cinema City géolocalise dans Paris des extraits de films à l'endroit même où ils ont été tournés. Des balades sont proposées aux utilisateurs pour découvrir la ville à travers le cinéma. Cinema City est aussi un laboratoire de création qui produit des fictions balades originales en cinq épisodes à l'échelle d'un quartier. Pour aller d'un épisode à l'autre, les utilisateurs sont invités à se déplacer à pied. Well, you got the picture, right? Uh, open Data Tourism Hack. This is a project from a company in Barcelona that's actually it's called Hack at Home. It's a platform actually to connect to developers to solve problems in a city. So this is linked to tourism. They have done projects with the World Bank on sanitation, uh, on transport issues, but it might also be a way for you to actually ask developers to build apps for your program or create together with you. This is a new trend, many brands start using this, called also app challenges, things like that. This video, I'm not gonna show it, I'm a bit short, I guess, in time. Okay, major news channels are all using user-generated content. All the major news channels are using that all the time. Um, BBC iPlayer reached 200 million uh, connections per month in October last year, so there's more and more activity on iPads and iPhones. Finance, I'm going to skip this one, but this is an example of uh, Halifax in, uh, in UK that is actually creating a real estate app to uh, connect its financial services and, you know, uh, build more value for their users. Square is another startup that was not there three years ago. It's now worth three billion. Yeah, it's just a device actually that you put on a mobile phone and that uh, can create, uh, can take credit cards. In retail, yeah, this video I like to show you if I have a time, yeah, because you have. South Korea is a unique market. Tesco has been evolving itself, adjusting to the local market. It even changed the name itself 
from Tesco to Home Plus. And at last, it grew to rank number two in Korea. But Tesco had to overcome one obstacle, a fewer number of stores compared to the number one company, Emart. Mission, could we become number one without increasing the number of stores? We made an in-depth study into Koreans once more. Koreans are the second most hardworking people in the world. For them, grocery shopping once a week is a dreaded task. So we decided to approach these busy and tired people. Idea. Let the store come to the people. We created virtual stores, hoping to blend into people's everyday lives. Our first try was subway stations. Although virtual, the displays were exactly the same as actual stores, from the display to the merchandise. Only one thing was different. You use smartphones to shop. So yeah, you, you got the picture, right? So they can basically use the smartphone and without going to the, to the retail store, they actually can order in the metro and they get the food delivered at home before even they get home. Uh, fashion, Condé Nast is investing in these fashion platforms. I'm not gonna go over there. Uh, net a is one of the coolest apps in fashion that are actually understanding their users and they increased their revenue by 56%, mainly due to a mobile app yeah, last year. Storytelling with mobile, I just have some examples of actually uh, American platforms that are uh, using or integrating already the mobile and other devices into the storytelling experiences for you guys. Here's right. Yeah, so they use basically a platform where they integrate all these elements already for uh, program makers. Another one is uh, Galahad platform, which already won a, a Grammy award for one of their shows uh, last year, where you can do multi-screen experiences, mobile experiences, manage and create content, and uh, manage rewarding systems also, all within your, and monetizing content in your shows. Uh, I'm going to stop here, future of engagement. This could actually be a new presentation. This is a, a, a report that I really can recommend to all of you guys. It's uh, just released from Publicis, and it discusses things as uh, trends, as crowdfunding, behavior change games, collaborative social innovation, grassroots change movements, co-creation communities, social curation, transmedia storytelling, collective intelligence, social recommendation, and social life experiences. These will be the trends and also the challenges uh, for you guys to integrate these things in, in, into TV of the future. So to, to close, I would say there has never been a more exciting time for TV. TV is not gonna die, TV programs will not die. They will just be enhanced by mobile. Yeah, so I think it's a very exciting time for you guys to start looking at these things and start integrating them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that, that was a uh, courageous attempt to roll six presentations into 30 minutes, right? Yes, because it's a lot of information. All the yeah. industries and yes. mobiles affecting every single one of them.